Describe your liberation. It was the train stopped in a uh, uh, wooded area uh, with a ridge uh, going uh, above the, the treetops and uh, we heard a metallic sound, a rumbling sound, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning and we didn't know what to expect. There were still some uh, German guards guarding the train and uh, after a few minutes an American tank showed up on the ridge and everybody was quiet, we didn't know what to expect. Uh, is there going to be a, a, a gunfire or what? And we waited a few minutes and the tank stopped and an American soldier was coming down uh, down the hill from the tank uh, with his shoulders slung over his chest like he was going on the parade. Uh, the uh, two guards on our train, two German guards, aimed their guns at him. And uh, some of our stronger prisoners jumped those two guards, knocked them to the ground, and then we realized what's going on, that those are American soldiers uh, up on the ridge. So a, a, a big crowd of, of our people, the prisoners from the train, surged towards, towards the American soldier who was coming down. And uh, they were yelling to the soldier, shoot, shoot the guards, shoot the guards, he wanted to, to kill you. He said, no. He said, uh, we have orders to take prisoners. And uh, uh, the soldier that came down the hill, the American soldier, he couldn't move because everybody was at his feet, kissing his feet. And uh, he was crying. The soldier was crying. And he, he introduced himself, who he is, that he's from Brooklyn, but who knew what, where Brooklyn was in those days. Uh, and uh, uh, he uh, said uh, that yesterday, April 12, 1945 it was, he says, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt passed away. And, and he's, and then a few more soldiers came and then the medics came and they started checking out the people for uh, uh, whoever was, uh, had any problems, health problems. And uh, they, uh, the American soldiers took over the whole area and uh, there was a village uh, nearby and uh, the, uh, of the American officers uh, ordered the uh, villagers to cook uh, food for us. Uh, they, uh, they cooked such a, such a fatty soup for us that some people didn't eat it because they realized what can happen. Uh, we were very, very hungry and starved. Uh, that uh, it will have an effect on our stomachs. So some didn't eat, but whoever, whoever ate had a big problem during the night, that night. Uh, some people died from it. And they were, now they, uh, they were busy taking out corpses from the, from the uh, regular cars because some people died of starvation and disease. So they, they uh, piled them up near the train to be taken away. And uh, uh, when the medic checked me out, uh, they, uh, I, I remember one soldier swooped me up into his arms and took me to the hospital because I had double pneumonia. I, I was sick with double pneumonia. I was, I was scared when they took me to the to a, a German hospital 
and I saw the bed was white sheets and uh, the uh, German uh, nurses and doctors. I was very afraid. But after a week or two, I don't remember how long I, for me it was ages, uh, they cured me, they gave me vitamins, they gave me vitamins and uh, uh, I, I was over my, my problem. But then <coughs> the American soldiers uh, uh, went to a uh, SS colony, which was a, uh, a settlement for uh, SS officers, and they ordered all the German families to clear out of their apartments, and they uh, settled the 2,000 people of the, from the train into the apartments, SS apartments. <coughs> and they gave us uh, uh, ID cards. They took pictures and uh, uh, ID cards uh, saying, and the ID card says uh, what they were liberated, what, what they we left Bergen Belsen concentration camp, and how long we were traveling, uh, and the day that we were liberated uh, by the Ninth American Army and signed by Captain, I don't know which, what name it is, because it has a signature on the ID card, I still have it. Uh, we stayed and they, they provided food for us and they, they moved on another, uh, another uh, military uh, outfit took over and we stayed there a couple months. Uh, the, the place was called Hillersleben. Uh, we stayed in Hillersleben a few months and then the American authorities came and they said uh, that we will have to move from here because the area will be taken over by the Russian, uh, Russian army. So, uh, they asked us, where do we want to go? If uh, people from Poland want to go back to Poland, wherever the uh, people want, they will send them. But who wanted to go back to Poland? We, we considered Poland a big cemetery. You know, so uh, nobody wanted to go back. So they said, but where do you want to go? You have to leave. So like, and one, like a chorus, they yelled out, Paris, why not? <laughs> a, free, a free trip to, to, to France. <laughs> so, Is that where you wanted to go? Yeah, why not? <laughs> we, we had to, to wait because my mother was an American citizen and she had to, uh, 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 she had to go, go to American Embassy to show her birth certificate because uh, we wanted to go to the United States. So uh, <coughs> the American authorities uh, set up a train, a passenger train, and uh, almost 2,000 people got on the train and were off to Paris. Uh, on the way, uh, the train stopped on, on bridges and on broken uh, uh, broken uh, bridges uh, that were bombarded by, uh, by the Allies. Uh, and one bridge uh, was there over the river Elba that we crossed uh, on pontoon bridges. Uh, I still remember how it was, uh, how slow the train was going because the, the pantoons were shaking, you know, well, it wasn't steady. And everybody was holding their breath. Uh, recently, I found 
the uh, commander of the uh, of the, ta the tank commander of the outfit that liberated me. I spoke to him on the phone, and he he mailed me a whole story of how he his thoughts uh, of. Uh, how he liberated the train and about the people on the train and the prisoners, the German prisoners that he took uh, uh, were, were interrogated and the prisoners told them what orders, what kind of orders they got from Berlin uh, what to do with the train. He says that the German prisoners told them that they had the orders to uh, push the train off the broken bridge into the river Elba with the 2,000 people to drown them. It's a horrible thought, but lucky, lucky for us that the American army showed up just in time. And, uh, well, we are off to Paris now, and uh, we came to the uh, uh, French border, and the, uh, the authorities, French authorities, didn't want to let us through. They have enough refugees, so they... Uh, Was that their reason for not allowing the Jews into France after the it's war? It's not only Jews, they didn't want any more because uh, the uh, concentration camps were liberated and everybody was going, uh, you know, to towards France, uh, away from, from the Russian army. Even with your mother's American passport, or American citizenship, they wouldn't allow? They wouldn't allow because she had to prove that she was American. With the, with the American uh, birth certificate in their pocket. Uh, and uh, so the one that was in charge of the train said, I will get you there, and I will get you to Paris a different way. We will go to Holland. From Holland, we will cross the border to France. We came to Holland, people came to the train, uh, the Dutch people, they begged us, don't go to France, stay over here, we will we'll give you anything you want. No. Who wants to stay in Holland? Uh, we go to Paris. They don't. They close the border, the other way. Also, the border between Holland and uh, and uh, France. So we wound up in Belgium.